Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments, and in this video, I want to talk about the text split, but not just about the text split, but the limitation or bug with the text split, but I'll focus more on the workaround. Okay, it's going to be in two parts. I will show one of the workarounds in this video, and there will be a second video, you know, for the second method. So let's understand the problem, first of all. So we have a couple of names here, which we want to split, you know, into the different names, more like what you do with a text to code. Okay, so but now I want to use a function. So I use text split, right? So I do text split, I select the text, which is this, and then my delimiter is a space. Good enough, you can see it spills and you have the three names. You take this down and you can see that this works for you know all the other names, right? Problem is most times these days we don't write formulas in this way where we have it in one cell and we drag down we write it in one cell and we want it to spill into the other cells so that seems like an easy fix rather than using a2 i could just do a2 to a10 right so i have it now i see a spill error so i take out what i consider the obstructing cells and you can see from the results that this spills into one column it's not able to spill into multiple columns and multiple rows at the same time you change this back you know to just um a2 you would see that you have it spill into the different columns so it's a well-known challenge you know where you have a one-dimensional array or a column or row vector like you have here and you want to then create a two-dimensional array from it which is multiple columns multiple rows big problem but the two functions that help you have been named aptly. They are lambda helper functions. That's the make array function and the reduce function. So in this video, I'll talk about the make array function and how it can be useful in creating, you know, a two-dimensional array from either a row or a column vector. Okay, so let's start up. I can use make array, right? The first argument there is the number of rows in the 2d array that i want to create so i want the number of rows to be equal to the number of rows i have in this range so rather than just writing nine i may decide to write something like rows of this okay so this is going to evaluate obviously to nine that's fine then i put a comma and i say number of columns i really don't know the number of columns right the number of columns is based on the person with the highest number of names okay so just eyeballing i can see that there's an alpha sule ulu debut so maybe i say four you know just because of him right and then i go into the lambda portion so for lambda you have two variables the first variable would be one that iterates through these rows so if you have nine rows there it means that this variable if you call it r for example will start with the first value of one and go all the way to nine now you have a comma you put the second variable which would be more like a column iterator c right you can use any names here i'm only using r and c c the number of columns here is four so it means c will start from one two three and four okay so it means that this is going to be a nine by four array now the next thing you want to do is okay what's the calculation what calculation do you want to perform and see the result in this nine by four array i can say for a start i just want to see one value so i just say 10 for example okay i close the lambda i close the make array the first thing at least that you see the success we've achieved here is that we've been able to create a two-dimensional array right at least we have the formula sitting in one cell and it spills into nine rows and you know four columns okay so now let's modify it slightly so what if i instead of seeing 10 i want to see in you know each of those cells the row number which is r and then i want to have an underscore and see the column number so that i can see in every cell that oh yes this is you know ninth row eighth column or fourth row fifth column and so on so let's do an enter here okay and you see that right so it means that here this obviously is row six column three this is row three column four so now that we have this working we now need to do the actual calculation that we need within the make array to make this work so now you have to think about it in terms of the result what are you expecting you know that for this first cell here what will be here is the first name on the first row okay the one one tells you that so the first thing you need to do is be able to get the array an array for the first row meaning split the text based on the first row then you take the first name that's what will sit in this cell the next cell is after you have split for that row 
the second element is what comes in here and so on so let's now go back and see if we can fix this so rather than doing the r and underscore c which is where the calculation is i'll take this entire portion out so what do i need to do first of all i need to be able to on every row know you know the name that is on that row meaning that if i'm in row one i'm interested in money if I'm on row two, I'm interested in, you know, Wayne Macaroni. You can use something like choose rows and say, okay, if I choose row one, this is what I, I would get from this array. If I choose row two, this is what I would get. You could also use the old school function index. I could decide to use index, you know, just because, well, many people use index. <laughs> okay. So I want to use index. And for the index, I would, you know, split the text first of all. Okay. So I'm going to do text split of what now so how do i get you know row one first of all in this case i can use the same index function within it i can say index and i will select the entire you know array here and i will now say comma in terms of row number i will say comma r why am i using comma r because r will start off as one okay in such a way that this will now be you know row one by the time i go to the next row or the r goes to the next row row two it will give me what is on row two so what i will just do here is i will say r and i would use a column number of zero so that it gives me you know all the columns in that row okay so now i will split this based on a space so this whole text splits all that all that this is just going to split you know everything and give you you know the names in the different um you know columns as the case is okay so once you are done with that i already put an outer index now the outer index is what will now pick the individual element so what you have in here is just maybe the three names split into three columns so now with this index now i need to now pick the individual columns so it says here the row number how many rows will i have because this is just text split on one row we know that this is one row so the row number of course is one right now for the column for column one what will you be interested in you'll be interested in the first element from the text split for column two you'll be interested in the second element column three the third element you don't need to start writing one two three you already have a variable that helps you iterate from one all the way to the end so that variable is called c right that was what you defined it as so with that you can close the index you can close the lambda you can close the make array and you, press enter. And you can see that now we have at least a spill that goes through everything right so for everybody you know we have the names the only challenge is that in a case where you don't have as many um you know elements to fill that particular array then you have a ref error because you've already had coded here and you said you need four but not everybody has four names okay so to fix this you can easily use an if error okay and then with the if error you go to the end and you then say if it's an error just give me all right so this way you know this works perfectly so it looks like it's fine the only challenge i have with it personally is the fact that i have had coded you know the four here which i think would not make for a robust and dynamic solution because if for example this guy has a fifth name tomorrow okay that's not going to show up in my array because my array has already been locked to four if i change this of course to five you know yeah then you know and i now have clean thing, right so what you may want to do as in to make this more robust is to have that four you know result from a calculation meaning that you will want to see you know how many names each person has and the one with the highest number the maximum number you will set that as your um you know your column number so that you are always able to cater for the list that you have so let me show you an example how do i get you know the number of names that each person has i can do that by getting the number of spaces you know within um each of them right so here i know that i have two spaces if i have two spaces it means i have three names so the number of names is the number of spaces plus one so let's just do it old school i can take the length of the string i can use one of them i could use all of them at the same time okay and then i'll take the length after i substitute in that string the space with nothing so what am i saying here if as in i have two spaces in a name right and i substitute those two spaces with nothing it means that the string is going to shrink by two because there were two spaces of course taking up two characters now that you replace them with nothing it shrinks by two so it means that whatever it shrinks by is the number of spaces you have in there okay so i close the bracket now you can see 
Oh, uh, sorry, I forgot here, A2 to A10. Sorry about that. <laughs> the answer stumped me there. Okay, so now you can see that. So, what you are seeing here are the number of spaces, not the number of names, right? The number of spaces. So, there are two spaces here. So, to get the number of names, you know, you just do a plus one. Okay, so now you can see three names, three names. Somebody here has five names. So, what you now do from this is you can just take the max of this, okay? Right? You take the max of this. And the max of this will tell you at least what you need to have in terms of, you know, the number of columns. That way, you know, your formula would always be able to expand accordingly. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify, you know, my formula and I'm going to infuse, you know, this portion into it. Okay. So let me just keep this somewhere first and let me come back here and then modify this formula. All right. So now let's expand the formula bar. We will break this out a little. You know, some people may want to use the advanced formula editor for this, but, well, I'm just going to, you know, work in here. All right. Okay. So, now let's start up. I think the first thing I would want to do is I may want to maybe use a let, right, so that I can create a few variables here and there. So, maybe the first thing I would want to do is I'll create a variable for the range itself. So, I can say let, you know, here the range represents A2 to A10. Okay, so that way, whenever, you know, I'm saying, um, you know, range, it knows it's A2 to A10. Yeah, there's some interesting things that may go wrong, but, well, let's leave that first. Okay, that's the first thing. So then let me create a variable for the number of rows. Maybe I call that ROW. The number of rows is rows of range. Okay, so however rows, many rows you have in range, that would be what I would call as ROW. Okay, then let me now do the number of columns. I call that CL, let's say. Okay, and I will put that calculation I did just now. You remember this calculation, right? This calculation tells us, you know, how many columns we read in it. So I will change this instead of doing A2 to A10 because I already defined it as range. I will call this RNG. I will come in here and I will call this RNG. I will smartly not replace the last one inside the make array. If not, you will see something go wrong. <laughs> okay, so, and then, okay, I put a comma here now, right? And now, I cannot go into the calculation. So here, instead of doing rows of A2 to A10, the number of rows is whatever you have as your ROW. Don't forget you already defined that. So that's ROW. Then, you know, here, instead of having 4, that 4 is what we call our CL, right? So it means it would always calculate and know how many we need, all right? So once you do that, every other thing is just a calculation. Let's be sure of, you know, our brackets here. So let's see where this is. Okay, so that's the let. So this is supposed to come first. So let's close the let. Then after that, we can put for the if error. Okay, and then we can close the if error now. Let's see if we are fine. Okay, spill error because of this guy here. Okay, so you can see now that it spills. If I add another name, you know, to this clean thing, I just add somebody else. Okay, and just say James. See that it spills. It will just keep creating, you know, a 2D array to ensure it accommodates the number of, um, you know, maximum number of names that you have. And if for any reason this whole thing reduces and every of these Bill Clinton, James, you know, just goes off, right? Okay, so you can see that our array now has become, you know, like a 9 by 3 because it has figured out that the maximum number of columns that you have, you know, is 3. And based on that, it works. So this is, you know, more dynamic and this is very robust. So make array is excellent when it comes to creating, you know, a 2D array from a 1D array where you have maybe like here a single column, you know, or a single row and you want to create multiple rows, multiple columns. So I use this here with the text split, but it can be used with other, um, you know, functions and to solve some other problems. But I specifically used it, you know, just to have a workaround to the text split challenge. In the second video, I would use the reduce function you know, to solve the same problem. So I hope you've enjoyed, you know, this video. Maybe slightly long, but yes, because I needed to explain well for you to understand. So please do hit the like button if you like the video and also subscribe to the channel Excel Moments with an S and one word, no space between the Excel and the moments. Right, for now, I'm out.